Welcome to our lesson 12 in physics for engineers and today's lesson is about waves. Our learning objectives at the end of this discussion is for you to be able to discuss the nature of waves, the transverse and longitudinal, to identify the characteristics of periodic waves, to describe the speed of a particle in a wave moving along a stream, to discuss the nature of sound, and finally, solve problems applying the fair effect. Our topic outline, we will start discussing, discussing about the nature of waves, then the periodic waves, then we have the speed of waves on a string, the nature of sound, and the fair effect. Nature, nature of waves, ripples and upon musical sounds, seismic tremors triggered by an earthquake, all these are waves phenomena. Waves can occur whenever a system is disturbed from equilibrium and when, when the disturbance can travel or propagate from one region of the system to another. As a wave propagates, it carries energy. The energy in light waves from the sun warms the surface of our planet. The energy in seismic waves can crack our planet's crust. In this chapter, we will discuss about the mechanical waves. The waves that travel within some material called a medium. We begin this chapter by deriving the basic equations for describing waves, including the important special case of sinusoidal waves in which the waves pattern in a repeating sign or cosine function. Mechanical waves is a disturbance that travels through some materials or substance called the medium or the wave. As a wave travels through the medium, the particles that make up the medium undergo displacement of various kinds and depending on the nature of the sound. There are two features common to all waves. First, a wave is a traveling disturbance. Second, a wave carries energy from place to place. We have two types of mechanical waves, the transverse and longitudinal waves. Longitudinal waves. In this way, the particle displacement is parallel to the direction of wave propagation. In this animation, shows a one-dimensional longitudinal plane wave propagating down a tube. The particles do not move down the tube with the waves. They simply oscillate back and forth about their individual equilibrium. The position. So here we have pick a single particle to watch this red dot. The wave is seen as a motion of compressed region, which moves from left to right. In the second animation, the right shows the difference between the oscillatory motion of the individual particles and the propagation of the waves through the medium. In this animation, we can also identify the region of compression and curve faction. The primary waves in an earthquake are example of longitudinal waves. The primary waves travel with the fastest velocity and are the first to arrive. Transverse waves. In this wave, the particle displacement is perpendicular to the direction of the wave propagation. The animation shows a one-dimensional transverse plane wave while propagating from left to right. The particles do not move alone with the wave. They simply oscillate up and down about their individual equilibrium positions. As a wave passes by, now if you pick a single particle and watch its motion, you can see it just simply goes up and down. The S waves or the secondary waves in an earthquake are example of transverse wave. S waves propagate with a velocity slower than primary waves, arriving several seconds later. 
Water waves are an example of waves that involves a combination of both longitudinal and transverse motions. As a wave travels through the water wave, the particles travel in clockwise circles. The radius of the circle decreases as the depth into the water increases. The animation at right shows a water wave traveling from left to right in a region where the depth of the water is greater than the wavelength of the waves. I have identified two particles in orange to show to show that each particle in the travels in a clockwise circle as a wave passes. And here we have another example of waves with both longitudinal and transverse motion, maybe pound. It is called railing surface waves, which pound in solids. The particles in solid through which a railing surface waves passes move in elliptical shape with a major axis of the ellipse perpendicular to the surface of the solid. As the depth into the solid increases, the width of the elliptical path decreases. Railing waves in an elastic solid are different from surface waves in water in a very important way. In a water wave, all particles travel in clockwise circle. However, in a railing surface wave, particles at the surface trace out a counterclockwise ellipse, while particles at the depth of more than one feet of a wavelength trace out clockwise ellipse. This motion is often referred to as being retrograde since at the surface the horizontal component of the particle's motion is in the opposite direction as a wave propagation direction. I have identified two particles in orange in this pro animation to illustrate the retrograde elliptical path of the surface and the reversal and the direction of motion as a function of Depth. The railing surface waves are the waves that cause the most damage during an earthquake. They travel with velocities slower than secondary waves and arrives later, but, which, but with much greater amplitudes. These are also the waves that are most easily felt during an earthquake and involve both up, down, and side to side motion. Now for your test your understanding, give at least three examples for each transverse and longitudinal waves.